Hello, my beautiful friends. What is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here. Today's video, I am not going to prolong this video with a whole bunch of rambling. I am actually going to get straight into today's topic. Before I do so, of course, I have to ask you to go ahead and like and subscribe because you are going to want to catch more of these gems. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much for rocking with your girl. I believe today, as we speak, we just hit 4,000 subs. So thank you guys so, so much. I love you all. And we're gonna get right into today's topic. All right, we need to talk about what a lot of y'all need and what I needed years ago. And that is financial mistakes that you want to avoid in your early 20s or even like 18 years old and up. Obviously, everybody's paths are going to be a little bit different. Everybody has different upbringings, different childhoods, come from different kind of families. And, you know, some people have a little bit more of an advantage than other people. But these are just the tips that I know I lived through and they were super beneficial for me to be able to start creating the success that I want in my future. So I feel like I kind of gathered these up to help you guys and I hope they resonate somewhere. So number one, a lot of us, as soon as we hit adulthood, we don't focus on our credit the way that we should. And I think that is a huge mistake that you want to avoid is not focusing on your credit, especially if you have a history um, prior to you a uh, family or parents that didn't really have credit. Um, like I mentioned in past video, a lot of people in generations before us, they really didn't believe in credit. They didn't believe in banks. They didn't believe in letting other people care for their money and things like that. So credit was not typically talked about too much and we all all know that credit is not talked about in school so i really really highly highly recommend that as soon as you can start building credit start doing your research and really pay attention to your credit although your history won't be very long you can start creating good habits leads me to number two this is something you really, really want to avoid is making poor credit habits. Whether that is a credit card habit, you do not have to apply for every credit card that barks at you. Just because they're offering you 20% off to on your purchase today if you signed and applied today, you don't need it. You don't need every credit card. You don't need a rewards MasterCard. You need to avoid those at all costs. Yes. A part of credit is a healthy amount of open accounts, but it cannot stay healthy if you are brand new to credit, you don't really know what you're doing, and you're not creating good credit habits. You want to make sure that you're educated about your credit. You want to know what makes up your credit score. So a lot of people have very high utilization percentages. You don't want your utilization to be over 30%, and that's for a total. So. If you have maxed out every single card, your credit likely is going to be trash. It's gonna be, it's gonna be trash. Even if your credit cards aren't maxed out, they can start to weigh you down every single month because the higher balances you have, that's gonna be a higher monthly payment and higher interest. And it just can get, I've seen literally two credit cards, two credit cards pull me down once and I was like, okay, I don't like this. I don't like this. The payment is so high, like, it was it was such a it was a bill that i really did not like to have an expense that i felt was unnecessary so how could that have been fixed or prevented was to not use so much of the credit card really want to understand what you're doing with a credit card a credit card is not your money it's somebody else's so if you're not in a position to pay it back don't take it out and on that note if you're not in a position to pay something back don't take it out. Number three, you guys have to stop stop taking out payday loans. Stop taking out cash advances. Stop doing that. You, If you can't afford it, then you can't afford it. And it's one thing if you're doing that, you know, like in distress, in serious time of need, this has to go towards, you know, bills or whatever. But y'all be taking out payday loans to go shopping, to go to Miami. No, ma'am. No man. Stop doing that. And that brings me to number four. This has to do with student loans. Like a lot of people have talked about student loans before. Okay, fine. But I do feel like they are a bit unrealistic when it comes to student loans. But the only tips that I can, like they make it sound like you just can get through a whole four years of college without ever taking out a student loan. Okay, you know, it's not impossible, but everybody's not built like that. Everybody's not set up like that. Everybody doesn't have the grades for that. Um, so if you are going to go down the path of student loans do it responsibly do not take out the max that they offer you only accept 
what you need. Do not get caught up in the hype of a refund check. I have never ever gotten a refund check from student loans before because I never accepted the full amount. My semester, if it does not cost the full amount that they're offering me, I don't take the full amount. I just take exactly down to the penny what I need to pay for that semester. I don't need the refund check so I can go to Myrtle Beach during spring break. I don't need that. You don't need that either. Stop doing that because you are setting yourself up for a massive, massive amount of debt by the time you graduate. And trust me, she gonna be waiting for you when you graduate. I was waiting on you at the dollar. Number five, it is okay if you do not move out from your parents' house <laughs> as soon as you turn 18. All right, I moved out at 19, but, but, I definitely think that I was set up and in a position to be able to provide for myself. Um, not saying anybody helped me, but I definitely learned a lot from my mom about how to, you know, live and how to finance and budget and save and spend, which is why I can give you guys these tips. Honestly, y'all can thank my mom for all of the gems I give you because I probably learned like 80% of it from her. Um, but I definitely was in a position where I was confident in myself that I could live on my own. But at the same time, you don't have to move out. Stop being so quick to move out from your parents' house. I know it sounds like the worst thing in the world to stay with them longer and longer and longer. I'm sure that you are absolutely tired of being there, but it saves you so much money. You do not have to pay rent. You don't have to pay renter's insurance. You don't have to pay a light bill, a gas bill. You do not have to pay a water bill. You don't have to pay for cable or internet. You don't have to pay for a lot of stuff when you stay with your parents. Stay with them as long as you can and save your money up to be able to comfortably get out there on your own. Obviously, you can set up some type of agreement with your parents if they're not the type of parents to let you live there rent free. That ain't got nothing to do with me. But I'm sure it is, I am almost certain it's gonna be far cheaper to stay there than to go out to the real world and start spending all this money. I'm tired of spending money. I'm sick of it, sick of it. Number six, you really want to avoid recklessly spending your money. So even if you are in a position to keep saving your money, you don't have many bills to spend it on, um, but you know, most people do have bills to spend it on and still make this mistake. Stop recklessly spending money. I know a lot of us have that mindset of, you know, spend the money because it'll come back. Um, very true, very, very, very true. But when you look at like most millionaires and billionaires and trillionaires, they're so rich because they know how to not spend their money. They only spend their money when they absolutely have to or when it's to invest in something that's gonna make them more money. Y'all just be spending y'all money just to spend y'all money. Spend the money, it'll come back. The memories won't come back. The money will. Like, I get it, YOLO, but you gotta start you gotta start saving your money i definitely think that you have to stop the reckless spending um and i'm not saying that's you know a starbucks here or a pedicure there um because honestly i feel like when it comes down to those things it will help you save money if you don't do them but in the long run you know it's not gonna put you in debt enjoy it but if you taking a trip every single month and you only got to fly Delta and you know you live in your best life on your own dime and you're not in a financially stable enough position to do that, I feel like you you know, you know when you should and should not be, you know, I ain't even gonna, you know. Number seven, you want to make sure that while you're young, you are learning really how to budget and how to save. Budgeting is such an ugly word and I know we hate that word, but it really is going to be where you can truly live your best life. It's that line between you and your best life is the budget. And if you can't afford to step over that line and go live your best life while everything behind you is still in place, then something's wrong. So if you have to check your bank account before you go out to dinner with your friend, you probably should not be going out to dinner with your friend. If you have to check your bank account before you buy that item, then you probably should not be buying that item. You're not budgeting the way you should be. You should have a set monthly budget for necessities like you know your bills your rent your car and things like that and then for your wants so things that are wants may be you know that brunch date with your best friend or that mini treat yourself shopping day it could be those things but if you don't have 
the funds already put aside for that do not go a double dip into what you were supposed to use for bills or your last don't spend your last on these things and a lot of people are doing that just to keep up and honey i don't know if you keep up with but don't do that to yourself number eight you don't even have a savings account bankrupt no money on my car when i found out from a few different people that they didn't have actual savings accounts i was just like baffled you know i didn't really know like a lot of people don't have savings accounts like i've already talked in one of my videos about how to effectively save money and different tips for what you can do for that but it was very shocking that a lot of people don't even have the actual savings account open or they you know have it open and there's nothing in it um you need to start getting disciplined with your saving and open an actual savings account um and i recommend a savings account that you can't withdraw money from from your phone you only can withdraw money if you go and get the money out physically because that is the biggest downfall with a savings account is you can easily transfer the money on your phone from the savings account to the checking account and boom you've spent the money in the savings you really want to put it somewhere that is safe and secure and actually can actually build you more money and grow over time to where you aren't self-sabotaging yourself and taking it out when it's supposed to not be being used it's supposed to be being saved number nine this one is super important you guys um like i said in my last video about the fear of missing out a lot of people will do things that are pretty much above their means just to keep up with current things in social media and other people influencers um and i really want you guys to know that you do not have to buy cash or finance a brand new car if it is out of your reach if you only make forty thousand dollars a year you have no business getting a forty thousand dollar car your car is your salary you can't you can't afford that I know the payment sounds good, but that is realistically unaffordable for you. And I need you to just take a step back. And it's okay to get something that is within your means. You don't have to get the brand new 2021. Like I talked about in my car video about leasing. I highly recommend leasing um, because when it comes down to it, you're really only paying not even close to what the car is worth. There are people who are going out getting car notes that are like $700 a month just so they can have a brand new car and i just i don't see the point in that it's not a good financial decision zero out of ten stars i do not recommend and number 10 kind of piggybacking off of that one stop financing stuff period you do not need to finance everything if you cannot afford to buy it cash then you don't need it stop you know after paying stop using Klarna stop using those things I used to use those things myself but I had to really sit back and say do I want to deal with this payment when it's due in two weeks and another two weeks and another two weeks and another two weeks no I would rather just pay for it in cash and get it out the way and if I don't have the cash for it then I can't afford it I'm just not getting it I will treat myself with that item when I can afford it stop financing cars furniture clothes electronics you don't need it if you cannot afford it right now promise you it will be more rewarding when you can really say you worked for that item you worked for that thing and now it's yours i promise you i tell you these things you guys because i love you and because i don't want you to make these mistakes but yeah that's all i got for you today and like i said i wasn't gonna keep this video long and rambly so yeah that's it um don't you forget to like subscribe share all that good stuff and i will see you in the next video bye